Barbershops have been serving folks of all races for a little while now, and we're talking centuries. But there's a little something that makes a black barbershop different than, say, supercuts. Back in the 19th century, running a shop was a major way men from an enslaved generation could get a little money in their pockets. From there, the black barbershop became a cultural institution and a safe space for black men to be themselves. Hollywood even had to get its own cut. We can't talk straight in the barbershop, then where can we talk straight? That said, the communities that barbershops actually serve didn't need the silver screen to tell them why they're important. Barbershop is an institution in a community because it's always been a place where blacks can conjugate, talk about different topics. Hello? You want five? All right. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to cut off. It's like an older lady. Not too many older people have come back to the barbershop. They're more leery, I guess. Mm-hmm. Kids grow up in a barbershop. You know, people bring their kids to the same barber for generations. It's just a, a safe place. So it, it's just very instrumental and very important to the um, black community. Levels me up. You know, being a barber is a big responsibility. When you're in someone's head, you know, your energy is going into someone else's head. Their energy is coming out to you. Um, They're cleaning off, you know, um, spiritually, physically, mentally. You know, the first thing that we do when we're going through something is we take it out on our hair. You know, there's a reason for that. That's not by accident. I was hearing stories from my friends in the queer community about their mistreatment at neighborhood barbershops. You know, I'm a natural entrepreneur. I love entrepreneurship. So I said, all right, let me uh, see what barber school is like. All right, you know the deal, you can take your mask off, just breeze through your nose, and we won't talk, which we're not talking anyway, so. (laughs) COVID definitely has made me rethink my relationship with the city, my relationship with clients, my relationship with my barbers, my relationship with my business, everything. I know I'm saying don't talk and I'm asking you questions. (laughs) Social distancing for our business is practically impossible. That can be stressful for the barber as well as for the clients. So we're really trying to meld and trying to um, be sensitive and gentle with each other as barbers and as clients. We knew people would be desperate after three, four months without a haircut. So cats was coming back woofy. So we started off with a bang too, but then we have, it started started tapering off because you have those clients that might have health issues or high risk and apprehensive just about coming back in, making sure it's safe. Look at a Saturday morning. There ain't no barbers here yet. It's normally, Saturdays be popping. <laughs> normally early in the morning, Saturday morning in a barber shop. Of course, there's always a risk factor. It's always a risk factor. And I just be as safe as I can possibly be. You know, I'm washing my hands till they bone dry. They ashy Larry right now. But I'm about to <laughs> get some lotion on my joints. The price of gloves have pretty much tripled. We have to buy plastic aprons, plastic capes. We have to buy extra cleaning material. So all of that really has taken a toll. And thankfully, I I had started ordering stuff early, you know, just in case my barbers didn't. So when they came back, they would still have things to, they could just either buy it from me or I would, you know, allow them to use some on their own, you know, uh, for free. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a very expensive, uh, expensive thing, but we have to, you know, we have to comply. The transition back is tough because then we have all the protocols and the cleaning and the sanitization and you can't sit in the shop anymore, which takes away from the culture of the barbershop because people just can't, can't hang out. You got people that's just like mascots in the barbershop. They just come here and chill all day. <laughs> that's dead. We had to dead them, but they still come around. They, they just hang outside. <laughs> if my shop wasn't here or if people weren't able to, to come in, I mean, it's exactly what was missing during the shutdown, which is um, a place where people can come and, and uh, relax where people can get groomed, where people can feel themselves on the outside the same as they do on the inside. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. 
I don't think the black community can go without a barbershop. In some sense, I think it really would take away from black culture. I think barbershops will uh, go back to the way they used to be in time. In time. The mask thing might be the new norm. It might go on, that might be forever, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think far as uh, people coming back in, being able to sit down and things of that nature, I think will eventually come back. <laughs>